Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Mountain Man Max. I'm your host Max McAllister and uh, today we are going to be installing some flooring and not your ordinary type of flooring here at my new uh, hybrid timber frame home. And uh, let's see, let me get you switched over here. There you go. We're in, uh, we're east of Chattanooga and here's in, in my home. And we're building a loft floor today. And the reason I'm doing this video is that we're building this floor up here. The reason I'm doing this video today <clears throat> is because I couldn't find any information on how to do this. So most of what I've learned so far, I've learned the hard way. So uh, we've got lumber everywhere for this job. <clears throat> um, this is two by six, uh, nominal, um, tongue and groove, Douglas fir. So you can buy this in all kind of grades of wood. Um, but we chose Douglas fir because the timbers in our home are all Douglas fir. And uh, Douglas fir is a very, you know, uh, it's not a hardwood, but of uh, softwoods, it's hard. So, uh, and again, it was kind of the species that the house was, the bolt skeleton of the house was built from. So, <clears throat> unlike, you know, typical three-quarter inch tongue and groove flooring, uh, which you can basically practically twist with your hands, this stuff is nothing like that. <clears throat> it is really thick and really heavy. I mean, it's two by four thick, basically. Uh, what's cool about this stuff, by the way, I'm my own cameraman today, so sorry. I'm gonna try and get my wife to help in a minute, but this wood has two sides to it. <coughs> and normally, you would choose your own side. So you get the option of having a grooved tongue and groove or you can use the other side of the wood and have a solid deck with no seam anywhere. In our case, <coughs> we are using it two sides all at once. Oops, I got a camera lady, my wife. We're <laughs> suddenly I've helped. So we're using two sides. So our floor is also a ceiling. So this is called structural wood. So it's not... Um, uh, it's not, you know, something's thin and flimsy. Uh, it, it actually can serve as its own floor. Now, if I've read you can span uh, six feet easily, seven feet sometimes. I don't have any spans of that size here in the area that I'm decking. Uh, so for us, we have no trouble at all um, with spans. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, we might as well kind of start heading upstairs, and I'll talk as I walk. Uh, <clears throat> So this lumber I bought from a really cool supply yard. They specialize in uh, all kinds of hardwoods and cool things uh, called Norcross Supply in Norcross, Georgia. And then I transported it up here to my home site in Tennessee. So um, that's safe over there, uh, Tim. <coughs> um, the, uh, and if you want to set that down, you could and, you know, open up another level of the telescope there on the beam. But anyway, so I, look, I researched this on the Internet. You can type how to install 2 by 6 tongue and groove flooring. There's one video of, like, a guy somewhere in Hawaii who's just, like, doing a, a shack, you know, kind of thing out in the middle of nowhere. It's not like a, you know, a, a fancy residential home or anything. And he was just putting, he was using it actually as the main floor of the house, but he didn't even have a house yet or anything. He was just building it on a, on a framed floor. So, but, and then other than that, he just said, you know, here, put the boards down, you know, no instruction whatsoever. <clears throat> so even in print, you know, never mind videos, couldn't find any videos, couldn't find anything. So I asked a bunch of people, uh, guys at Norcross Supply and other places like that, um, and got kind of, an idea, uh, but in the end, uh, it's amazing. There are just there's so little info. So uh, by trial and error, I have gone I have gone through a lot of trouble, and so I've come up with 
a really pretty good method for this. Again, if, you're talk if you've done decks before, deck boards you can bend and twist and bow and push and with your hands practically. Um, this is not like that. You know, you can't just bend a two by four with your hands, never mind one that's six feet, six inches wide. Now, they actually, just for purposes of calculating, they're five and an eighth inch is the piece of material you get uh, from surface to surface once they're uh, butted together. Um, <clears throat> as far as your bottom surface, uh, you know, there's questions, should I glue it? Should I nail it? Should I screw it? Um, and the answer to all those is, you know, yes. And, and I'll show you the things I do. Um, there was another thing I saw where people said they used roofing felt as an underlayment. And so what your, your goal is, is to not have the floor ever squeak. Uh, squeaks and creaks come from wood rubbing on wood. So if you can segregate the two slightly, that should eliminate your squeaking. Now, the roofing felt to me uh, seemed single purpose and had no secondary purpose of any type of bonding. So I opted for glue. So I'm gluing <coughs> my boards and also uh, nailing and screwing them. So I started out using small stuff because some of the things I read said you can use a brad finishing, a finishing nailer. Again, there are all this, these instructions you're going to find. Everybody's talking about three-quarter inch tongue and groove, you know, hardwood floor, uh, <coughs> which is nice. Uh, you know, this, this stuff, I happen to be in the lot uh, at Norcross Supply the day the truck pulled up with this. They couldn't possibly have been fresher, squarer, nicer on the rack, not exposed to the elements, was totally covered. We bought this material, put it right on my trailer, drove it to Tennessee, let it climatize for several days here on site. Then we stained the underside, which is going to be our ceiling, um, because we really won't ever do anything with it again. It's not going to get urethane or anything like that. It is finished. And then later on, you know, we're going to get our house built and then floors will come last. Um, and then this will get, you know, obviously treated. I'm not going to talk about any of that because I, I have not done any of that, so I have no expertise on that yet. So, uh, but we've left this bare for now just because we know we're going to be damaging it and nicking it and all that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> um, the big problem with the boards is twist and stuff. Now, again, my lumber was brand new. I mean, right off the truck and almost every board I have is twisted. And they are incredibly difficult to, to deal with. So the tools that I've come across that you're going to need, um, uh, uh, I kind of start from the beginning. I use Makita battery-powered tools. This is a little blower. It's like a little leaf blower, but this thing's awesome. Uh, keeps everything clean as you move along. Uh, you don't want sawdust and stuff down in between or chips, wood chips and things on your surfaces because uh, you want everything to lay as flat as it possibly can and obviously with your glue you don't want dust in your glue. Um, <clears throat> then you just absolutely have to have a pair of these heavy sized uh, clamps, uh, squeeze clamps, because the boards are twisted you're going to use them to grab a joist in the board and help pull the, take the twist out of the, out of the board because sometimes you can't even get the tongue and groove, you can't even get it started. So these, these will help with that. Uh, I'll show you about this mason's chisel. That's for driving nails in that don't fully seat. Um, you'll need a screw gun. I obviously recommend, I like Makita. They pay me nothing. It's just I've been, they've been good to me over 20 years I've used them. Use star drive screws. The screws I'm using here are two and a half inch. Um, they're, I think they're, what number are they? They're star drive screws. Uh, why don't they say what number they are? <coughs> I'll be darned. They don't say what number they are. Uh, normally, uh, they would just say number 8 or number 10. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Well, I wish I could tell you. They're a heavier gauge. I'm going to guess they're the heavier of 8. All right. Um, and these Deckmate ones are guaranteed for life, and they're in black which is cool because if you happen to have to, have to face screw anything, the black screws, depending on the environment, your house you're doing, look, actually look cool. So, and then I, <clears throat> little nailers, little screws, I tried little screws, all that stuff is a total bust. For this type of lumber, you need real stuff. So that's why star drive screws, this is a framing nailer. <clears throat> um, I'm using three inch uh, ring shank nails. 
the ones I'm using happen to be hot dip galvanized. Um, you don't have to have that, but you've got to have ring shank uh, so to stop the screws from pulling out over time. Um, so a smooth nail is no good for this application at all. Uh, the, you don't have to have galvanized, uh, but in this case, I, I just, you know, it's a little overkill, but overkill is always okay as far as I'm concerned. And you're not doing this, you're not nailing this stuff by hand. And I'll show you, you got to go very precisely into the tongue of the wood and not, not make a mess. So <clears throat> um, you need some two by fours um, and I'll show you why. These are, we're going to use that with, we're going to, when you have a board that doesn't want to line in or get tight, you're going to put this very close to it, screw the board down to your joist, take a small pry bar, small little wrecking bar, pry, and you'll pull the board tight, then you'll either nail or screw it from there. You're going to need a good sized sledgehammer and a 4x4. Four four. These two work as a team. Um, a framing hammer. Uh, you know, knee pads or things if you want for crawling around. Um, these aren't practical because you're moving constantly, these soft uh, pads. And then uh, you'll need some glue, uh, heavy construction glue, something, you know, libeled extreme or on and on. That's kind of good. Um, I'm not going to talk about layout, nothing like that. Cut in. But so what I am going to show you is how I start with because uh, I'm doing a lot of this mostly by myself. Um, I want to get, you get your boards always as you bring them up, you know, oriented as you, you know, we're bringing them up to a second floor. And these are 19 feet long, so they're, they're no easy thing to handle. Uh, you want them oriented in the direction you're going to be building, so you don't have to try and turn around with it. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, the, uh, the next area that I'm gluing and placing a board, I put my board in, in front of me, and I'll show you why in a minute because I'm going to set it down into the glue in a certain way. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, you can stay over there, but I'm going, to, I'm going to lay down some glue. What you're looking for is kind of a quarter inch to three eighths bead. Um, and leave a good inch from the edge of whatever, if you're doing in my application, if you're near a roof. If you're just doing a deck that's under, it don't matter. But what happens is when you tighten these boards down, you'll squeeze this glue out and mess up your nice beautiful ceiling that you've gone to trouble of making. So my wife is having to clean up messes. So if you get a big glob like that, scoot it to the middle, um, uh, but try and avoid the glob. One way you can do that is don't cut too big of a hole in the tip of your caulk gun. I'm making little M's because my name's Max McAllister. You make, make whatever shape you want. Uh, and so <clears throat> there's my glue is down. Now we're gonna lay the board in. So you're gonna stand the board up close to the edge like this, since again, you're by yourself and this is heavy, all right? So you're just gonna set it and you want it to go 45 degrees at the tongue. 45 degrees because you're trying to get it to slide under the t slide into the tongue all right so now if you're lucky it does if you're not it doesn't now and the other thing is all over the place is you should leave a gap uh, we're not leaving it at this end we're leaving it at that end all around the room can't find a definitive answer on what the gap is supposed to be but just that there should be one um, because this floor is going to grow and contract and shrink significantly throughout the year um, as seasons and humidity change. Um, so I want this kind of tight there. <clears throat> uh, the pry bar works good if you're uh, trying to get something to line up a certain way. So you can, like, you know, from 20 feet away, I can move this board down there if I want to get it tight, tighter down here. Um, if your board isn't set right where you want it, don't get it all the way on the tongue and try and do it. The more it's on the tongue, the harder it'll be to move it. Now, this board's twisted, and this is going to be a great example because I can show you virtually everything I do and all the tricks that I had to learn. Um, so you see this end is high here. 
and this end is low and twisted down, so I can't even get it to start right now um, by hand because it's just it's just too messed up. Don't bang with your hands. You're just going to bruise yourself up. Always use tools for this. It's easy to just want to go smack, smack, but believe me, at the end of the day, you'll be sorry. Now, if you've got a section that's lining up, congratulations, you can start there, particularly if you know you've got one end where you want. Now, here's where a clamp comes in. This is where these are just literally must have on, on a job like this. If I've got a real pretty area that I want to nail, now, see, a nail isn't going to draw this board down. You've got to get it down and then nail it. Um, and screws really, you know, can pull on it some, but don't let the screw try and do all the work because you'll pull it through the wood and wreck the wood. Uh, and I'm going to show you some close-ups in a minute when we're screwing. So screwing is very specific or you'll just break the wood apart and break the, t break the tongue off. So I've got a nice seam here and a nice seam here. You can't even see them. So I'm going to come close to that one that weighs away, and I'm going to try and pull this down. Now, you may have two by two by joists. Now, if you see what's happening here, and you can pull a trigger on this and shorten that t telescope if you want to shorten that stand up so you can get closer. So I want to show you what happens. So I have the tongue fitted, okay? And, you know, when I go to start twisting it down to get it to lay, you're going to see this, this crack open up, okay? So here, here it fits, you know, everything, well, you can't even find the seam. It almost looks like those two boards literally came from the same tree almost, but, uh, or, or I mean from the same. But look, as I start to take the twist out, this big gap opens up. So now, uh, we obviously don't want that. So this is where you take a four by four and a sledgehammer, and we're just going to knock this. Now, if, it, if you're hitting this super hard, it's, uh, it's a sign something's wrong, okay? So, so that's all that takes. So now I've got several beautiful, like you actually can't hardly, see, actually see there, that's not the seam where that wood color is. This is the seam here, it's really good. You are gonna find, there's gonna be in occasions where, and I'll show you how I pin the wood together, you're still going to see a gap, so it's just not, it's not you. Don't, don't be upset. But you do need to take your best effort with every single place you're going to drive fasteners to make sure that the, um, uh, the, the, the gap is as little as it could possibly be. Now, this is important, and if we can get the camera close for this, if you want to kneel down. So this is a framing nailer, and I've got it set to, you know, dead maximum penetration, um, you know, the, on the adjuster, I want the nail to go, you know, down in. You, you want the nail to overdrive through the, the tongue so that it's not protruding at all when, so that you can slide your next board on. If the nail is protruding at all, you're going to have to drive it in by hand, which is a real, uh, a really difficult to do. So not only do I have it set on full drive, every time you push, set this gun and pull the trigger, you have to be very precise about it. So I'm taking the nozzle of the gun, and when I push the safety, I'm putting that nozzle right 45 degrees, right into the corner of that. Um, and I, I watch it touch. So that's very important. And then I even hold it down, and I drive that in there, and uh, that's, and that's on, on your gun. <laughs> My cattle dog doesn't like nail guns. So I've got another good one here. I'm going to do a couple of these while I got them. Uh, try not to nail through knots. Your nail will get rejected or bent, and uh, you'll, it'll just give you aggravation. So never nail through a knot, even if it meant you leave them. Uh, if you've got wood that's laying real flat and is very you know, helpful uh, to you, you can um, use just two nails. Um, now, the screws are, when th are for when things get bad um, or are troublesome. So now I'm going to go, while I've got this clamp here already in place, I'm going to go to the other side of it. I'm going to try and tap this in just a little bit while I got it there and see if it'll go. So it is going. But so sometimes they'll go and you hit it again and it pops back out. You're, you're like rebounding the wood off of itself. So we're just working. 
segmently like that. So, so far I haven't missed on a nail and I'll show you what to do when you miss on a nail because it just, it happens. All right, so this is a good opportunity to show you my uh, squeezing method because uh, we're, we're gonna, we are gonna have trouble here. So, see how this board is twisted up here? Sure. This board's twisted up. Now, I don't have a clamp long enough to reach down off this giant timber. Mine will reach here. So I'm gonna come closer here. I'm gonna clamp this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forego working on this one right now. And I'm gonna pull that down. Did you see that? Did that show up on the camera? See that? See, I'm, dra I'm drawing this down. There you go. You see it draw down? Real nice. So it was sticking way up. Now, it's, now we got it tight. But so now I've got this gap here. Can you lift up? Mm -hmm. So that's what we got to get rid of. Now, I'll try, uh, um, I'll show you this. This is my, my little handy dandy method here for doing this. So just leave this set up. What you're looking for is a gap of about 3 sixteenths of an inch here. And it's just enough, you want it just enough to put the tip of your tool down, your uh, pry bar into it. Don't leave a big gap. Um, and you, you'll actually want three to four screws because if you put just two screws, it'll actually just bend the screws trying to pry the wood. That's how strong the resistance of the wood is. And I've been screwing my ends, my two, my ends of the, each board. I, uh, I just kind of like that, knowing that that's how that is. All right, so here's, here's the first money shot for you. I want you to see. I'm just gonna pull on this lever and watch the gap. See that? It opens, closes. So, what you're gonna do, you're gonna pre-start a screw. Now your screws, this is also very important. You want to uh, start, a, start your screw, but the angle is critical. It has to be at least 45 degrees, not more shallow, because what's gonna happen is you'll pull down, you're gonna break the tongue off and break the wood. So it has to be at least 45 degrees, if not more, all right? So, now get, just get started. You don't wanna go into your sub, your wood. You just wanna be ready. You're gonna close your gap with your lever and then drive that screw home. Whoops, except you gotta have your gun going the right way. Remember, thou art mortal. All right. All right, now here's your next trick. You are gonna overdrive the screw. You wanna sink it so that it's not above uh, the wood so that the next tongue, in, the next groove can overlap it nicely. Now, it is possible that you will crack this uh, tongue. You can stay there. I'm coming right back with another screw. It is possible that you will crack that tongue. It, it happens, you know, even if you're conscious about everything you're doing, and, uh, you know, one out of four will crack on me some. But it's not a problem. I'll show you in a second what to do. Uh, don't get too close to the end of the wood. An inch to an inch and a half away, not less than an inch for sure, because that's another thing that laid in cracking the, uh, the tongue off. So... Just what all you want it is gone. Don't drive it any more than you have to, just to get it gone. And you're gonna remove your your um, bracer board. I don't know what you call it. All right. So now we've got that just as tight as a drum there. This whole section. Now, um, while I've got this clamped good and tight, now I'm gonna go back to my nails. Right, get rid of that. So now we're gonna move down the line. <clears throat> now, if you'll see, this end is completely screwed up. Now this board's obviously 19 feet long. The odds of you dealing with a board of this long, or, you know, I don't know what kind of house or deck you might be building, but um, my goal, oh, you guys stay down. Um, my goal on doing the constructing this floor was to have no butt joints anywhere. So I added some additional framing 
that wasn't included in the house kit that should have been included in the house kit, by the way. Um, but I have no, if you look down the deck here, I'm, I'm running all my boards one direction and there are no butt joints anywhere. This is all seamless other than the actual seams themselves. All right, now, here I'm about to show you the super trick of the century um, for these boards. So you can actually get in a situation where if you put your four by four down and uh, to protect your tongue and you take and you bang it away with a sledgehammer, which you'll see some people do, uh, and it still won't get, it still won't go on. It still, it still just won't happen, particularly with this big heavy wood. So here is the trick, heavy clamp. You're gonna put the heavy clamp on the board, squeeze it tight. You're gonna pull in the opposite direction of the twist and watch the magic happen here. You ready? I'm gonna, yeah, me. Look at that. That, my friends, is priceless. That took me quite a while to accidentally stumble upon. So, that one tip was worth whatever you watch here today because that saves so much beating and aggravation and sweat and misery. Um, so now, this board is nice and tight for a pretty fair ways here, so I'm gonna keep nailing for a moment. I'm gonna run along here. Still got plenty of nails. Now, so I'm starting to see a gap open in here. And so instead of driving nails here, I want to try and minimize that if possible. So <clears throat> I have found if a board wants to move, it will move without too much aggravation. So this is just a plain old two by four and a framing hammer. And so I got that to come closer down there, came closer here. This isn't exactly how I want it because that may be as good as that gets, but we're going to find out. So now, since I had this big meatball of a beam here, I've been using a little combination of screws and um, nails on this giant beam. Also, because this is my longest unsupported span here, it's, you know, four feet-ish. Um, not crazy, but in the case of this two-inch wood, it's, it's nothing. So I'm going to put a couple of screws here. Remember, sharp angle, you know, very shallow angle. Overdrive them. Make sure you can't feel them with your finger. All right. Don't, don't screw a nail into a knot. If you see my knot on my tongue there, just, just avoid that <coughs> altogether. If you had to leave one screw out, it, it actually just doesn't matter. So I don't like this gap. It doesn't seem to want to close up. So I'm going to go back to my little pry bar trick and see if I can't get that gap to close a little. Um, the problem with gaps is, you know, depending if, if you're lazy about keeping them tight, you can actually start getting your whole floor out of square um, and having a, a, a rainbow effect of, you know, a fan. <laughs> turkey fan effect of your board spreading around out of, sp out of space. You know, I'm going to exaggerate, but what I'm talking about is this. You know, you got to keep, keep them tight. And so you don't want a gap here because you're just making bellies and then that makes the next board not line up and then everything gets to be a mess. So one of the problems with doing a 20 foot floor like this, every tool you need is where you left it at the other end. So you're going back and forth all day. <coughs> I'm gonna, uh, I don't need this anymore because I got that what I wanted. I'm gonna start this screw. And let's see if our gap won't close. Cause I think it will. Look at that. See that? It's, it's quite tight. I'm not able to get this out because I don't have anything to help me with that. No other joist here. So that little gap is just something i got to live with. Now, I will show you what I'm going to do to see if it will self-close here in a moment. 
Now, I'm having to get closer to the end of the wood than I care to here because there's a knot. So I don't want to get too close over there. I'm going to get, I'm going to kind of compromise. I'm going to favor closer to the knot than I am the edge of the wood. Okay, here's a good example. This cracked. I'm going to show you two things. Now, I kind of, I kind of expected it would, um, <clears throat> so, which is fine because I'm going to show you. So see, the knot caused that to split. All right, so don't panic. Um, look, you have 20 feet of tongue and groove here. <clears throat> you, you don't need it all. So the first thing I do is I just tap the tongue. Uh, be, you know, kind of beat on it a little bit. Give it a few good whacks. Here, you could probably just lower it over me there. You got it? I'm just going to hit it. And if it goes back into place, that's all I care about. In this case, that worked. I, I don't care about this anymore. That's quite fine. So where the screw split, um, if you, when you hit it with a hammer, the head of the wood will sink onto the head of the screw and you're back in place and no blood, no foul. Now, say it really does split horribly and particularly you've, you've made a, a fair mess. Just remove your screws from there and uh, take a jigsaw or a sawzall and just cut that section of tongue off. You, you don't need it, it's not important. Then when you've got it out of the way, put two screws back in. What you don't want to create is a situation where you're fighting with trying to align the next groove on the next tongue. So uh, that kind of got almost everything except for what to do if you miss with a nail. <clears throat> like you don't get a nail. So if you're lazy, you don't hold that gun right in the 45, push down with a lot of pressure on it, get it as close as you can get it, have your nail set to maximum depth. Give it a good fire, make sure it, it actually overdrives slightly. Then your nail heads, if you're limp-wristed or lazy about it, the nail head's gonna stick up in your tongue. So when you do that, do you wanna go back around to the stairs and you can kinda, or to that deck there, I'll show you. <coughs> it, that's safe there. All right, so say I have a nail that's sticking up that I don't, that I don't like. I don't really have a good one, but here's one right here, we could, we could say. So this, say this is sticking up in the groove. This is a mason's chisel um, that's got the safety handle on it. If you're not used to beating on chisels for a living, you're likely to beat the daylights out of your hand. So this chicken stick, they call them, uh, helps keep you from injuring yourself. You're just going to take this, lay it in the groove onto the head of the nail that didn't get driven. Because if you try and do anything with your hammer, you're just gonna tear that groove apart. So you've gotta put something on the nail and hit it. And these are framing nails. So, you know, first thing you might say is, well, you get a nail set. You're not moving. You're not, don't kid yourself. You're not moving a three inch ring shank nail in, in, uh, with, with a nail set and a hammer. So you take this chisel and you're gonna really smack it. First of all, you're, if your nail is really aimed good and it's at 45 degrees, just, Give it a whack and you'll drive it in further. Um, you have one that's giving you trouble. I've had more luck getting a shallow angle on it and knocking it into the wood this way, trying to avoid hitting the tongue. Okay, so, and you can drive them in tight that way if they're sticking up at all. So that's invaluable um, for completing this pro project. Now, again, the tips I'm showing you here are all about working with two inch, two by six structural wood. You don't have to do go with use all this heavy gear on a normal uh, three-quarter uh, deck boards. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just set this camera up and I'm, I'm going to let it work. I'm going to let my wife go back to work and I'm going to just do some boards uh, start to finish and I've, I'll probably babble. It's unknown to do that. But <clears throat> thanks to my lovely camera lady smiling. Oh, yawn. Yawn for the camera. Oh. You didn't see the dog jump. <laughs> she jumped? Yeah. All right. So that's kind of the end of the lesson. But now some people just like to watch people work. I don't know why you would want to watch me work, but I guess that's a thing too. So I'm going to do that for you. All right. <clears throat>
Let me make sure I'm still recording. How long was this so far? Well, that's 35 minutes. I'll tell you what, that's probably enough pain and suffering. Um, and I think everything I wanted to show you is included there. So actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to cut this off. Thanks for watching. My name's Max. So uh, this is a little cockeyed. But uh, there's a thing somewhere around my screen here called the super thanks button. That allows you to give somebody that gives you tips or a lesson a couple of bucks for uh, sharing their experience with you. Please hit that button if you've carried away some valuable information today. Uh, hit the like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have lots of cool stuff on uh, this project we've done all the way from starting with a raw forest to where we've got a house going up. So keep an eye out and I'll have more great content coming soon. Thanks.